Welcome to episode 145 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're going to talk about all the stories that you tell yourself. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Boy, uh, I kind of have like a post-event hangover in the sense that it is, it's been a number of days since we had the live event in Philly. And I'm just getting back to like maybe the close to the beginning of my inbox and I'm feeling good, uh, feeling energized. They just announced that Philly is going to like close down big time, like no gatherings of any size anywhere. So talk about a buzzer beater. We had this live event in Philly where people were actually together in person and they came in from other areas and you know, we were able to keep it safe, but we were also able to have a really amazing time, human connection right? Human connection. And it's easy to forget how important and powerful it is because it's very difficult to establish that human connection over Zoom and over webinars. Like you can to a point, but boy, there's nothing like being in the room. Boy, there's nothing like hanging out after hours with people and just letting your hair down. A uh, little tough for me, but letting the beard down and uh, having a con having some conversations. Like, tell me about your life. Tell me about your business. What happened in that time is I was able to spend a little bit more time with some people that I know and I care about, but I haven't been able to hang around with for a while. And something happened that I really want to share with you because it very few times do you hear something or somebody says something to you and immediately it changes your perspective and it actually helps you in the moment gives you clarity in the moment. This thing gave me clarity in the moment. It gave me perspective, understanding where I was and how I could get to where I wanted to be. So here's the picture. I had just spent an entire six weeks really planning this event and we worked really closely together, planned and executed this live event in Philly where people came in and the day came and obviously the day before we went down and I brought the family and we did all the setup and testing and it was the morning of, and everybody gets up early, goes to the venue. I was all excited. You know, I was running on adrenaline. I didn't eat anything, which is really rare for me. I always, I'm a big, I'm a breakfast eater. Um, I didn't have any coffee. I just had some water. I had some juice and I was off to the races. I didn't have any lunch and the hours began to tick by, tick by, tick by. And then after the event, I spent another two hours doing podcast interviews with some of the guests. Then after that, I went down south, into South Philly and I took a bunch of these people so they could get the real cheesesteak experience in Philly. And that, that's when I ate. By the, I ate a gigantic cheesesteak. It was great. And then after that, we were just in the, in the hotel lobby, you know, eating, having a couple drinks and really just going over the day and, and talking about one another's life. And it was that was great. But here's the point that I really wanted to get to. So typically when I do events like this, I run myself ragged. And then the next day I'm completely useless because I leave it all on the field. I leave it all on the field. And I usually wake up the next morning and I'm like a zombie. They ask my wife, I'm just like, I want to sleep. And that's not like me during the day. And I'm, you know, I'm just tired and exhausted. So this was Thursday night, Friday. We were going to stay overnight in Philly. The family was there and we were going to the elevator with my good friend, David Long, one of the best people. And I said to him just in passing, I was like, man, I'm going to be useless tomorrow. I'm going to be useless. And he says this, well, that's a story you're telling yourself. And just like a lightning bolt, that hit me. That little nugget of clarity, that little piece of wisdom totally realigned my next 24, 48, 36 hours, 72 hours, all the hours after that. He said, that's a story you're telling yourself. And immediately that just shifted in my mindset. I realized that is a story I'm telling myself. Why do I have to be exhausted tomorrow? But by saying that narrative and believing that narrative, I was setting myself up to fulfill that prophecy that I'm going to be exhausted tomorrow and thereby giving myself permission to be useless the next day. What a waste of a day. And just that one sentence, well, that's a story you're telling yourself. I, I have not been able to stop thinking about it since he said it. And here we are days later. I'm still thinking about it because I'm thinking, how often do we live into the narratives 
that we tell ourselves about ourselves, about how the relationship's going to go, about how things never change, about how things aren't going to, about how we're going to be exhausted, oh, how this is not going to go well. The negative narratives, actually, let's zero in on this. It's the negative narratives that we tell ourselves. We rarely, right, it takes a lot of intentionality to create a positive story in your mind that you believe and fulfill. Why is that? We want to give ourselves permission to fail. We want to give ourselves permission to underperform, permission to underdeliver, so that we feel better about ourselves. And we believe these narratives. Most of them aren't spoken. The only reason that came out is because it was spoken just offhand. But I very easily could not have, I maybe wouldn't say that I'm going to be useless tomorrow or say it around specifically someone who wouldn't accept it. I'm so glad David didn't accept it. I'm so glad he was uh, a faithful friend in, in pointing that out. That's the story you're telling yourself. And it's been on my mind so much that I really wanted to share it with you because I think a lot of you, a lot of us, believe these narratives about our lives, about these patterns, about these weaknesses, about these unfavorable things that we constantly recite, regurgitate to ourselves, and we say them out loud or we say them internally. And not only do we believe them, but we follow the story when it's a crappy story. We still follow it. We give ourselves permission to do it. So I want to ask you, what stories are you telling yourself? What stories are you telling yourself that you are just accepting as the truth and living into? I'll never, I can, I can never eat right on the weekends. Lie. It's a story you're telling yourself. I can never wake up in the morning and do something productive. No, that's a story you're telling yourself. I can never not get stressed out when I watch the news. Well, guess what? That's a story you're telling yourself because uh, news alert, you don't have to watch the news. Actually, it's really beneficial if you don't watch the news, but you tell yourself the story that you're being a responsible citizen by watching the news so much. Guess what? Nothing changed between the time you went to sleep and the time you woke up that you really need to know as soon as you turn your phone on in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I know I hear you. Well, maybe that one time that this, guess what? 364 out of 365 days, nothing changed. And if it did change, it has to do with the weather. That's a story you tell yourself to give yourself permission to do what you kind of just want to do and often not what you should be doing. So I hope by me taking David Long's wisdom that he spoke that truth into my life and now me speaking it to you, I hope that you will start to identify the stories that you're telling yourself that you are fulfilling the prophecy you're telling yourself and you will stop telling yourself that story, but you will tell yourself a different story because let me tell you this. Here's the, here's the punchline. I woke up the next day and I had a great day. I felt great. I didn't crash. I had a great day in the city with my family. We had a great trip home. And after that, I had a great weekend. And here we are many days later. I'm in the middle of the work week. And guess what? Never crashed. Why? I didn't believe the story that I was telling myself. Actually, David was able to help me stop telling myself that story. So I hope that you stop telling yourself the stories that bring you down and that you start telling yourself the story that build you up and that help you and enable you, empower you to have the clarity you need to do the things that bring meaningful change and meaningfully impact the people around you. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me today. I hope to see you next week, and I probably won't see you before then, but I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. There's so much to be thankful for. I hope that you can be thankful in a deep way, even in the midst of this crazy, crazy year. We're all doing this still. There's definitely something to be thankful for. Tell yourself that story, and I'll see you next week. You just gotta love.